יחד בלי זכרי שגם אם זה חורף עכשיו תסתכלי כאות מגיע יום מעכשיו Welcome back. You're watching 101. We're talking with Israeli uh, pop star Idan Rachel. Uh, Idan, tell me about the defining moments in your career, the fun, you know, sort of highlights that you've had up to now. It's still early days for you, but yeah. it seems you've had a good success early on. <clears throat> Basically, it's, it, I was an accordion player, as I said, and then I started to play piano jazz and, and jazz piano, and then uh, I started to, in the army, uh, I was a musician and I played for soldiers. When I was um, uh, when when I um, when I finished the army service, uh, I started to work as a counselor uh, in a boarding right, school. Yeah. So I think this is the turning point because uh, I guided the teenagers from uh, that were immigrate from from Ethiopia, from Addis Ababa, and from Gonder, from the camps of Gonder. I also guided the the teenagers that were immigrate from uh, Russia. Then you see in this boarding school, in this small village, you see a very separate groups, very native groups that don't know nothing about each other. Uh, and there is no respect, you know. They respect their own territories, but, you know, they, they will not. Um, <clears throat> and I think this is, um, well, I, me, as uh, that I could explore the Russian music while I was... Uh, when I was a kid, and also I started to explore the Ethiopian music, and then started to merge it. Right. Nowadays, by the way, I, in this same boarding school, you can see the groups, you know, talking about the music of the project and stuff. So it's very excited to see. You feel it. the influence yeah. that you've had, yeah. And then while I was um, while while I was uh, working there, I was a production keyboard player for pop singers in Israel, and I started to play here and here. And and when I was, when I wanted to upgrade my career, uh, just to get hired by the record company as, as the arranger or the producer, I started uh, to record a demo of my works. But just as a demo, you know, just as a calling card. Uh, in Helicon Records, they like the demo as it is, and they offered me to release my works. It's, it was very weird for me because in this demo, I, I recorded it in my parents' parents basement, so you can yeah. you can hear you know door shouts and <laughs> you know the dog barking, but basically this is the first project, right. and the first that was two thousand and two. Yeah. yeah. So in the first project, uh, I can tell the audience, but if you notice, you see you'll hear all the dogs. Dogs slamming, dogs yeah. slamming. Now you um, the thing is that people though you were seen as an overnight success in Israel, I mean, a massive success, suddenly, you hadn't actually come from nowhere because you had performed with top musicians as a session musician, hadn't you? Uh, yeah, but I, as a session musician, they, they, I was familiar in the, you know, in the industry of music, music industry. How did it feel when you got your first number one, when your song's out there on the radio the whole time? It's just very, it's very weird, you know, to hear, because you, you're thinking, well, they didn't notice that it, it was recording in my in my parents' basement. You know, they, what you know, it's very. But then seven seven number ones out of seven songs released on the radio. That's that's an incredible record to achieve, but also a lot of pressure on you to sustain that success. So, are you feeling that pressure? Um, no, because I think the project title is such a general thing. You know, you can hide. Okay. You know. Gives you flexibility. Yeah, it's it's you know I can. It's like the music that like artists such as Nitin Sony or uh, you know that they can do a film score or the project can do to release one song or instrumental version or music for uh, you know. To Who are your influences, by the way? You mentioned Nitin Sony there. You know, obviously a very successful Indian yeah. uh, artist and fusion artist. Now, who are your musical influences? Um, I, I hear a lot of music, classical music and uh, Israeli music, uh, African music, Yusundu, Salif Keita, uh, Nitin Sony, the sound wise uh, and all the idea of, uh, what in, of his works. Uh, I hear rock, have, 
uh, hard rock, heavy metal, you know, I hear uh, reggae, Bob Marley and Sizzla and so from all over. How have you found the, the traveling and the touring around, um, visiting other countries? A, what sort of reception do you get? Uh, I have to admit that we are, we, are, we are touring all over and the crowd is very different from Singapore to Addis Ababa to Mexico. So, um, most of the time the, the crowd is very open-minded. Uh, it's very hard to sing in our native languages, in Hebrew and in Arabic and in... Uh, um, you are Amharic as well. With Amharic and uh, Tigrayan, so it's very... What about the, uh, the U.S. audience? You've toured the U.S. How do you find, I mean, do you find they know your work pretty well? Uh, it's obvious that we are known uh, at the Jewish community or the Israelis, Israeli communities. Um, um, it's, uh, it's much more exciting to perform in the, for students in uh, some campuses such as the uh, Pakistanian uh, students in uh, Columbia University and you know the, and then you can find people that you would never connect with you know such as uh, Iranian students or Sudanians or, so do you find when you go on a tour I mean, like for example your tour in the US is uh, partly funded by the Israeli foreign ministry you have influences of you know some funding at least from the government do you find they want you to put out a message that has a political like a political element to it? Uh, maybe they won't, but uh, we are not dealing with a political <laughs> statement. We do dealing with the social... Um, we, we wish to talk about the society in Israel because I think it's, uh, it's a really, really melting pot that it, it can uh, uh, make an example to people from all over. I think uh, also... Uh, I think also in, in England, there are a lot of communities in center London that don't know nothing about the Brixton uh, community, or about the Indian community. And I think uh, what Nitin what Nitin doing in, in you know with, when you bring the Indian music to the to the mainstream, I think it's 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 great. My my industry, the media. I mean, it's you know I can say we're guilty of focusing only on the conflict on the Israeli-Palestinian situation when it comes to the Middle East. That seems to be a lot of the focus. So I wonder, from someone who lives in Israel, who takes the music out around the world, what do you think is the most misunderstood thing about Israel? I think that, um, that there are a lot of things about Israel. And I think if you're talking about, uh, you know, about the countries, it's such an in interesting country. So, you know, so uh, beautiful views, you know, all over. Uh, uh, you can cross it in six hours by by car, and you can see all the all the nations from all over the world. And we have problems, we have problems, and problems that will be solved. And but you know, such as in every such as in in every country, I think uh, you would. Afghanistan is not only bin Laden and Pakistan is not only the conflict between India and Pakistan. If you were to think ahead, uh, let's go decades down the road, how would you want people to remember you? I don't know. I guess they will remember the music because obviously they don't know me. I can be a very nice guy, maybe I'm a very bad guy, <laughs> but you know, it's all about media, there's you know. Time, there's time for them to get to know you. No, you know, it's, I, really, you, you don't know nothing about uh, Paul McCartney. You just love his music. When you're saying that you love Paul McCartney, you don't really love him. You know, you don't know the person. You know what, what the media wants you to know. <laughs> we'll so see how I could be a very bad guy. <laughs> we hope not. Wish you a lot of success, though. You're done. Thank you very much. Thank you.